Michael King and Rostenberg. I wrote you a song. I wrote you a song. Michael King and Rostenberg, this is your song. This is your song. Voltron, Defender of the Universe, was narrated by Optimus Prime. Yeah, I heard that, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Voltron, the defender of the universe, was form blazing sword. <laughs> Voltron, defender of the universe, was reminding me why I don't watch some cartoons. Oh. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Falling Towers. Watch the first podcast. Podcast with watch the first episode of a series so that you don't have to. And uh, we, we start also- over with a different guest or something. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was gonna say. Excuse me. I was gonna say we. She's already given us a hint how she felt about <laughs> Voltron, defender of the universe. With yeah, us already, Pippi, tie dye expert, and fourteen time acid taking champion Michael Kenyon Rosenberg. More like thirty two times, I think, is how many times I took it. Mostly in high school, by the way. But you were the champion fourteen times. Okay. And uh, also joining us, special guest, actress, Roz Stanley. Hi, hi. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Ryan. And uh, let's get on with the show. I can't think of any descriptors. So, yeah. The incredible uh, Ryan T. The, the Husk. Incredible. Please continue. Of incredibleness, awesome to imaginable. Imaginable. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, if you want us to review a show, feel free to say WTF or type WTF in the comments below. Say WTF, empty nest, or WTF Smurfs, or WTF Fraggle Rock, WTF Batman. That means watch the first. It stands for watch the yeah. first. Yeah. Let's get on with it, guys. Um, please make sure to give us a like. Please make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And let's kick this thing off. The first game we like to play is called Predictions. We predict. What the did, we, did we name this? I don't think we actually named it something. I mean, it, that's what we do is we make predictions, but maybe we should come up with a snappier name. Yeah. Meanwhile, I've got clouds moving in, so my face keeps going like super bright and super dark. Um, mm. so let us Portland. Know, yep. See, there we go. <laughs> let us know in the comments what you think the prediction should be called, the prediction section. Yeah, the magic eight ball, the oracle, um, the, the tarot deck. The magic the secrets. eight ball. I said that one. No, eight fall. Eight fall? Oh, eight falling tower? Fall. Okay. I don't know. So anyway, right. uh, we make predictions. Here we go. Roz is like, mm-hmm. what have I signed up for? This is terrible. Guys. I'm going to predict <laughs> that Michael was medium on it. Medium plus, right? You were like like around six-ish to where it's right, right on the cusp of medium, but you're like, okay, still kind of cool, kind of fun, but not much, you know. Uh, I'm going to say Roz. Well, she did tip us <laughs> off. <laughs> but I am going to predict that Roz did not like it and is going to put it somewhere in the two or three section. What do you think, Michael? Mm. Oh, and everybody, uh, make your predictions right now. Do you think I liked it? Do you think Michael liked it? Do you think Roz liked it? Tell us right now in the live chat. Right or now. don't, but please do. Um, my prediction of Ryan is I know how much he loves 80s cartoons. Um, Voltron, <laughs> Robotech, He-Man, um, the Smurfs. He loves all these shows. And so my prediction is that Ryan loved watching this again. He loved being spoon-fed all the information <laughs> that they're like, here, this is everything. Let me just tell you everything that happens. He loved that. And so I, he loved <laughs> this this show, watching this show. Roz didn't, Roz was, here's here's what I think Roz thought. She's like, hmm, is this what people liked in the 80s? What, were they stupid? <laughs> people, 
people played with too much mercury back then. Yeah. Oh my gracious, that <laughs> might be spot on. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Think, let's, Ross? Yeah. let's get some I, predictions from you. I well, being the first day that I've met both of you today, I'm gonna take a wild guess that Ryan, you, I think you're you're on the side of liking it. Maybe not like straight out of 10, but like, I think you're in the five or six, maybe even seven um, arena with it. I think you liked the robots in it. <laughs> they weren't, they weren't, <laughs> they weren't in the pilot episode, but I'm yeah. guessing there's more to come. Um, and then Michael, I think, oh, I think there were aspects of it that Michael liked. I just don't know what they were yet, but I think it's going to be unique stuff about it that he liked. Mm. Mm. And that's my predictions. Okay. okay. Well, those are the predictions. We hope everybody at home has tabulated their predictions as well. We will be answering them shortly, right after this message from Michael Kenyon Rosenberg regarding what the heck is this show even about anyway? This series focuses on five lion robots and their pilots as they fight the evil forces of King Zarkon and Prince Lotor. In this episode, a crack team of pilots are selected by the Galaxy Alliance to travel to planet Eris and discover the secret of a weapon from ancient times, Voltron. Keith, Lance, Sven, Hunk, and Pidge arrive too late. The planet has already been completely devastated by the evil forces of King Zarkon. They engage in battle with Zarkon's general, Yurok, only to be captured and thrown into the dungeons on planet Doom. Wow. Mm. when you read these things i'm like that just covered like three-fourths of my notes like i spent all my notes i'm like okay there's a lance there's a, a pitch, yes. there's a, a hump you know and i'm like writing all these down and i'm like i could have just read that and i would have had everything i could have just enjoyed the show um anyway it was funny that the guy's name was hump yeah i loved hunk man he was when i was a kid that was he was my favorite character was hunk I, I don't remember that his name was Hunk, and it seems weird now that I was a little kid and I liked a guy named Hunk. But... <laughs> yes, Michael, can you narrate my life, please? <laughs> that was great. Roz Stanley wakes up in the morning, <laughs> applies a little bit of makeup, not too much, puts on a beautiful red top and joins Falling Tower to discuss Voltron, Defender of the Universe. Boom. <laughs> Short life. So then we move forward, we progress into something we like to call what we expected versus what we got. This is where we separate the children from the adults, as the French say. Mm, okay, how do they say that in French? Mm. Um, <laughs> I mean, I do know, but yeah. Uh, so basically, you know, what do you expect and what did you get? Michael, before you watch this first episode, what did you expect? Well, we have watched a few other 80s cartoons. We watched G.I. Joe. We watched He-Man and yes. uh, Robotech. Mm -hmm. And I think with, with all three of those shows... I, I was disappointed. Uh, I, was, I was actually let down from what I re remembered, imagined as a child to rewatching it as an adult. I was like, oh man, what the hell? Was I an idiot? I was an idiot, wasn't I? And I loved these shows because I was an idiot. Stupid idiot. Um, and so my expectation was, oh man, is Ryan going to do this to me again? Is he going to make me hate Voltron, one of my absolute favorite shows of all time from when I was a kid? Ugh. Yeah. That's what I expected. Yeah, I could see that. I, I, I'm feeling you on that one. There have been a, a couple letdowns when we revisit something. Uh, yeah. Because they're probably aimed at children. Roz, what did you expect before you watched this? 
So I had no idea about this cartoon ever. This was made before what? I was born. And um, I, when you, when it said Voltron, Defender of the Universe, I thought it, I figured the first episode would be about Voltron. Right. It wasn't. And then I saw like in like the ads for it, this guy, little Pidgey, 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 Pidgey. Um, and so I was like, it's going to be about Pidge. <laughs> and then so I watched it. And it was neither. It, um, it, we'll talk about what you got well, later. Uh, right. But it was, um, that's what I expected. But it was, it was, yeah, neither. Well, I'll tell you what I expected because I know you guys are dying to know. I expected to watch a cartoon that was fun and enjoyable, but maybe one solid level below less fun less enjoyable than he-man gi joke or robotech because i think hmm. when i was a kid i liked this one one level below still liked it i even had one of the lion toys not all five hmm. i couldn't make voltron i could just make like a leg or something so i expected to like it um, and I expected it to be enjoyable. And oh, there they are, Michael. Whoa, look at would you? Boy, oh boy. Yeah, I think I had the yeah I had the blue guy. Anyway, so that's what I expected. But that's what we expected. What did we get, Michael? That's what you expected after mm -hmm. you watched the show. What did you actually get? Um, I got. <laughs> It was a, it was fun. It was exciting, and it was nostalgic. And like Roz, I was a little bit baffled by the fact that Voltron didn't even really, sh didn't really show up. I mean, they talked about Voltron a lot, uh, and they showed some like, oh, look what <clears throat> we have to look forward to is Voltron. Uh, but I kept waiting, and I kept checking the time. I was like, are we gonna have time to see Voltron in this episode? Like. I kept like, get out of this so you can go get Voltron. Like, do it. Come on, guys. I was like rooting for them to like get out of their 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 predicament so they could go form like Voltron and form the Blazing Sword. All the fun things that I remembered as a kid. Um, um, but it was, this was just setting that all up. I mean, this is like, and I, I kind of liked it because this is before they actually unlock Voltron and unlock the, the lions. And so this is kind of the story of how they find this stuff. But um, I, I, was, I, was, I was in for the ride. I was, I, I was on board. Look how scrawny mm. that red lion is. That guy looks like a little wiener. I think that's one mm. of the arms. I think that's, oh yeah, no, the, the, the little wieners. I think the the yellow and the blue one are the arms. No, they're the legs. Do, That's why. Do they big. all fit to get? Did the Legos make the the big Voltron? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, Roz, what if you look? If you look at the the black one, it's like bigger. He's the body. Yes. Because he's the, the yeah, okay. the body and the More head. So. That's where he says, "And I'll form the head." The head. <laughs> <laughs> so, Roz, what did you get? Be gentle. I am, I am, I, I did not like hate it at all. It just wasn't, I guess, my cup of tea. Um, I got exposition, exposition, and some more exposition when I was watching the pilot episode. <laughs> Throw it back, Michael. Um, I also, I also was reminded though, when I was watching it, uh, of when they would say, and we'll be right back with more Voltron, or we're back now with Voltron. And I haven't seen that in a long time. Like I have not seen that kind of stuff in a cartoon or TV show in a long time. And I missed that. I just felt like there was a lot of exposition and not as much, uh, movement forward. That's what I got. We'll be right back after this message from our sponsors. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I'll tell you what. And I now more. Watch the first. <laughs> yeah. Roz uh, kind of stole my answer. Um, oh, I'm I, sorry. In my notes, I put uh, these guys are the champions of tell, don't show. <laughs> yeah. I thought the, you would like that. A. A. <laughs> I still want to watch a show. I still want to actually see something happen. Um, yeah, what I got was was an enormous amount of exposition. 
throughout. Uh, and we could talk a little bit more about that later. But one thing for sure was when they're trying to figure out how to get out of their done their their jail cell, they just kept talking. They kept saying, "Well, we got to think about a way to get out." All right, well, let's just put our heads together and think about a way out. And then, yeah, you know, oh boy, the guards are coming. Let's, you know what? Let's all think about a way to get out. I agree. We should think about, I'm like, you guys, you could have just come up with a way to get out by now. (laughs) They just kept talking about thinking about it. Let's think about it. Anyway, so what I got was a lot of that. Um, But still, you know, you know, hey, cool colors. Uh, I was also surprised that there was no Voltron. All the the only thing about Voltron was that they they talked about Voltron. They're like, we can't end the first episode without an appearance by Voltron. So let's talk about Voltron for like five minutes and talk about how great he is and how he's. But I'm like, you could have actually just found Voltron in that amount of time. Agreed. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so that's what I got. Isn't that the legendary castle of lions? Must be. <laughs> Isn't that where the secret of Voltron is hidden? Sure is, hunk. In show. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I don't know, Michael, did you notice uh, Exposition City? Yeah, yeah, and I thought that the, I thought that you would love that. You love it when they have at the beginning of the episode where they kind of tell you everything from days of long ago, from uncharted regions of the universe comes a legend, the legend of Voltron, defender of the universe. So I thought you loved that kind of stuff. I did love it. And that's the first thing in my note. Well, first thing is Optimus Prime is doing the intro because that was clearly Optimus Prime's voice. And then I said, beautiful song, a mighty robot, loved by good, feared by feared evil. Feared by evil. <laughs> a galaxy alliance was formed with the good planets of the galaxy until a new horrible menace threatened the galaxy. This is their story. I'm like, A plus, perfect. Now I'm ready to watch the story. And then they're like, but we're not done. We're still going to spend another 22 minutes telling you what this show's about, but not actually just giving you a show. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So yes, I was very excited at first. and then it- Brian, you're ruining my prediction, though. I mean, okay, well, I still liked it. But yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't that great. So, I mean, they, they, this, this was a very popular show back in the 80s. So much so that they made a second Voltron mm-hmm. that was 15 yeah, vehicles. Oh, 16, wasn't it? It was 15. I looked it up. 15 vehicles. That one I did have. Oh, you I, did? I did have that one because they were like little. They were like that big, you know? And then you put it together and the guy was like that big. or something, And it <laughs> fell apart like a dump truck would fall off the side. Or right, something. right. But then there was a oh, third wait. one with like three three robots i think there was a third one i didn't look too much into that because i only remember the two when i was a kid oh my Roz god is dying that's a lot of that's a lot of wait so there's 16 like lions that formed that voltron no there were vehicles like so, so, vehicles. Helicopters. so i guess like mattel um, probably was like hey these lions sell really good let's make one with even more things that we can sell Gotcha. So we'll make 15 okay. vehicles that they have to buy individually and yes. then they can put them all together and they can form Voltron and then it'll all I fall see. apart, I guess, like Ryan said. So. Yeah, <laughs> I think you bought it all as one set. I mean, was it Voltron himself was, you know, a big burly robot, you know, and really cool. But this one was more like a little, mm. you know, it wasn't, and each thing was like a little, I think they were like futuristic vehicles, like like land right. kind of things or something like but that. But I, I remember it was funny because like they had like land, sea, and air. Like there was like three different um, types of vehicles. But I remember them all being in space too. Like So there's like helicopters like flying through space and like cars driving through space and mm. to form Voltron. It was, it was a weird, weird concept. And I guess from what I was reading, the second Voltron, they called it, uh, what was it? Uh, um, vehicle, vehicles or something. Uh, vehicle Voltron. It was in my notes somewhere, but I I, I can't find it now. Um, but uh, I guess they could only stay as formed as Voltron for five minutes due to some a- energy things or solar power or something like that. Bad guy in a suit. Yeah. So Roz, which 
toy group would you want? The Lion Voltrons or the f- vehicles? Vehicle Force is what they called it. Vehicle Force Voltron. Oh, I think I go with the Lions. I think that's more simple. And I think more simple means more fun. Right? And I think I could actually put those together. 16 is a lot. Yeah. I mean, flying lions in space is just cool, though, right? I mean, yes, it is. Yes, lion, it is. Roar, lion roar. spaceships. They're, they're, it's like they fly in these lion spaceships in space and then they fight row beasts, which are like big robot beasts made by yeah. Zarkon. Which didn't really look mm-hmm. like a robot, it just looked like a beast. Right. Yes. But by the way, Roz, those lions are gigantic. Like they, <laughs> they they're not like people inside of a a lion bodysuit they like they're like their their uh cockpit is just in the forehead of the lion right they're just so the lion is like gigantic oh i I didn't realize that um but i did notice speaking of the row beast the girls that were fawning over him before he comes out of the arena they're like oh row beast (laughs) okay well did you feel the same about row beast no i did not maybe he has like you know, row special powers. Mm. Yeah, that makes them fall in love with him before he comes out to fight. Yeah. Special <laughs> abilities. You know. Special row yes. beast pheromones that he lets off to entice <laughs> the ladies. Boom. It fills the whole arena. Right. Yeah. And all the ladies are like, oh, that row beast, though. He's tall. Mm. He's beastly. Look at the size <laughs> of his feet. Oh, Lord. His robot well, feet. I was reminded from this show that like cartoon sweat is kind of gross, like yeah. on the cartoon characters, because <laughs> it's it's good. it's just on their face and it just stays there. Yeah. Like it's like something they don't wipe off and it doesn't glisten like real sweat. It's just like sweat. It's more like spittle. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd say I agree. Mm-hmm. Like they were just somebody was yelling at them and like little chunks of foamy spittle hit them on the cheek. Some and it just stays. <laughs> It'll just sweat droplets. Uh, sweat spit. Now, speaking of spit, <laughs> this is something we always like to talk about. Who is your favorite character? Because I did notice that three of them kind of were similar. There was Chunk, Hunk, right? There was Hunk, and there was Pidge. Who I, I remembered him as Chip. But I guess I was wrong. It was Pidge. Maybe they changed it later. I don't know. And then there were three guys that were basically the same, except one had an accent. Sven. Sven. What kind of accent is that? I guess it's supposed to be like uh, Norwegian or or Scandinavian or something. Or so. Who's your favorite, Michael? Hunk. Hunk's my guy. Right. That's right. Hunk. Hunk's the hunk, dude. I mean, like. He's just like this big burly dumb dude and like uh I don't know he was just always the funniest one to me even though Pidge is supposed to be the 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 the, the funny one he's just so stupid to me though <laughs> like oh hey, what is Pidge like what's this what okay. the heck is this stupid voice that they have him doing yeah I did not remember mm-hmm. that when I saw that I was like why are they right why not just maybe have it, a, a person? Maybe it changed play? in later seasons. But I did, re- mm-hmm. I did, I did remember there being a girl, the princess on the team. I think they and just then, the princess. And then later, I, I guess at the end of this episode, in the end credits, we see her. Mm-hmm. So she oh. must replace one of the the dudes that's the same. And I think I know who. I believe she was the blue lion. And I think that might be Sven. So I think that somewhere, whether it's in this first few episodes or in the first season, mm-hmm. I think Sven dies. I don't remember oh, that, but oh. you remember that she did replace somebody and she was the blue lion. So whoever was the blue one, mm-hmm. she replaces. And I think Sven dies. Uh, not to ruin anything for you, Roz, but who is your favorite? Okay, I did like Pidge. I think he is so cute. He's so cute. Oh my god, I don't pick his nose. Um, he is so cute. Um, but I like his banter with Hunk. They tend to put those two together a lot. Um, like when I guess oh they fell when they were dropped by the birds. Hunk was like, "Don't look at me," and Pidge goes back to him, "Well, quit looking at me." They're like little brothers that <laughs> always like banter with each other. So I did. I love those two character dynamics together. Mm. But I love little Pidge. Also, I'm just kind of looking at Pidge's hair style right now, and it's just kind of hitting me like. Pretty awesome, right? 
Yeah. Oh, and you know what? He's probably ends up being the green lion because I think they all kind of had the color. Like I think Hunk was yellow, right. and Lance mm-hmm. was red, right? And so Sven was blue, and then the main guy. What was his name? Keith. Keith? Main Keith? guy. Yeah, Keith. Keith. Yeah, that sounds right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Keith, Lance, yeah. Sven, Hunk, and Pidge. Yeah. yeah. Keith was the black lion, the champion, big guy. And I'll form the head. Okay, now can we talk about the elephant in the room? Because this was something that bothered me. I realize it's a part. Oh, the black lion? These guys, all of them, I mean, presumably are humans, but they had superhuman powers. Like when they're like, hey, let's get out of the dungeon by jumping, going. He's just like, oh, do it. And he jumps like a hundred feet in the air. No problem. Mm. Even, even Lunk. So I was like, oh, I guess he has super. Nope. Lunk, the big dude, jumps right up. Hey, I'll go up. No problem. And and then at one point when they're fighting the bad guys, Lunk, like there's a bad guy here. And Lunk jumps up, floats in the air, like total like Matrix style, floats in the air, turns around whoosh, and like kicks the dude. And I went back and watched it like three times. I'm like, that's not. That's not physics. What? They're still yeah. Humans. You know, um, they're still the, humans. The I know thing. they're cartoons, but they're still humans. They are cartoons, and in cartoons, you can actually do things that he, regular humans can't do. Hmm. And they were also the rock, thing. like a hundred feet down, and you're like, oh well, I guess the guy is just like, <laughs> oh, they land on the rocks too, and they're like, oh boy, oh boy. Well, mm-hmm. they are space explorers, though, is the thing. So, mm-hmm. tell us, like, and that. also, you got to think that like, maybe that uh, the gravity on that planet was less than Earth. Ooh. So, that could have been one reason why Pidge could jump so high and Good point. that they could fall and not hurt themselves. Yes. So, there's all these scientific reasons for things that exist. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, Lunk stopped in the air, he jumped up, rotated. <laughs> And kick the guy that way. That's yeah. you can do that in low gravity. You can Uh-oh. actually. I've done it before. I was gonna say, have you? Have you done it before? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, I, I've got a, a gravity switch in my room here. I can turn on and off that will. Do it now. It's way do over. It. It's do way it. over there, so I can't reach it. So <laughs> otherwise, I would. Roswell? Ryan, are you calling him Lunk? Yeah. Oh, what was his name? Hunk. It's Hunk. I think. <laughs> You know what? I you said lunk, chunk. Yes, what else? I think that lunk Funk. was also that same kind of character in Robotech. There was a lunk, lunk, and he was basically that. I mean, these shows would have the same kind of characters in all of them, right? Mm. So there was a character just like Hunk in Robotech, but he was called Lunk. Yeah, lunk okay. Dead. Anyway, Roz, just tell us what you would do in in low gravity. In low gravity, I think I would... Okay, hold on, guys. This is going to sound really weird. Low gravity means that I could float, right? Sorry, okay. Yeah, jump So I would probably... Oh, I would swim in jello. I would, like, make sure that jello could, like, rise and I could swim through it. That's what I would do. That's Mm. no gravity. Mm-hmm. Well, or low gravity. Well, some of it would, would, would chunks of it would, would hunk up, right? Or lunks of it would hunk up, right? <laughs> lunks of it would, lunks of it would funk up. Yes, That's what I would do. I love Jello. Okay. All right. That's interesting. Brian, did you expect you? that? Or would, I did not expect that at all. That's a very okay. interesting, creative answer. I thought, Brian, what Thank would you, you do in low gravity? gravity? Oh man. I mean, first off, I would go nuts on a basketball hoop, right? I'd do like 360s dunks. I would go, I'd like Michael Jordan it from like half court. You know, like run and jump, uh, spin around, you know, eat a sandwich, go like this, kiss the room, you know, and then dunk it and be like, what? Can you guys believe I did this? Put it on YouTube. You know, and then people would be like, that's totally mm-hmm. no gravity. That's not even that big of a deal. <laughs> but I would, that's, uh, you know, I would definitely start with that. But I think everything else would be just like doing fun things. Hmm. 
Well, I know what I would do. I would definitely, I would, I would make, I would get a green screen first of all, so that people wouldn't know that I'm in a low gravity environment, and I could like green screen myself in on places on Earth, and then like lift up trucks and like, like, like pick up a, a, a like a like a garbage can with my pinky finger. Oops, wrong finger, pinky finger. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I, and I'll put all that on YouTube and be like, oh my God, this guy's like the strongest guy in the world. What? Whatever. Yours would have like 10 views. Mine would have 10 views and everybody would be watching Jello Girl. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <I> <laughs> it would just say Jello oh, Girl. I want to watch that girl floating through Jello some yeah. more. Mm. Yes. Floating Jello Girl. Click. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm Jello, 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 Jello all of a sudden. <laughs> so speaking yes. of Voltron. Uh, yeah, you know, there was also the bad guys, Zarkon and, you know, whatever that guy's name. That was oh, and there was Hagar, the, the hag, the, the witch with, and then witch. the big Zarkon guy goes like, oh, do you think Kitty likes it? I guess the cat's name is Kitty. That's the best they could do as writers. He's purple. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about Zarkon a little bit. He reminds me of King Zora from The Legend of Zelda. Anybody else? No? Oh. Hmm. Not, not Ocarina of Time. I'm talking about like uh, like Link to the Past, Legend mm-hmm. of Zelda. Because mm-hmm. um, uh, I guess uh, in, in or- Ocarina of Time and then in, in later in the, in, the, in the new one, The Breath of the Wild, he's like the super huge fish guy. Um, but in the... In the in, in, it was, uh, I think, uh, linked to the past when, uh, when you, we first saw King Zora, and he, he looked a little bit like that with the big fish ears, and but then all the rest of his people, they just look like drow elves. Yeah, I was thinking uh-huh. the same thing, drow elves. Boy. I know you were. <laughs> I mean, they they've got the pointy elf ears, but they've got the dark skin. It's just like, yeah, okay, they're just drow elves. But then, how come he's got the fish ears then? Maybe he's isn't, a... isn't there another cartoon where like it's a fish person? The uh, like, no, but it's like it's they look like a fish person because they have like the ears and the gills, and it's going to kill me until I figure it out. Teletubbies? I no, I think no. I think I'm, I'm, uh, Bob I, work pants. There's no, there's some. I, I, I'm, I'm vague. There's some vague recollection in the back recesses of the corners of the attic yeah. uh, behind some dresser in my mind. Um, like someone almost very to, like, similar to this. Climb up there and like move the okay. dresser and sweep because there's a lot of dust. I'm sure back there. So fine, we'll think of it at like midnight tonight. Well, I'll be like, guess what? <laughs> Who it was? But yes, anyway, they but they all look kind of like him, but not really. But it goes. Yeah, I guess to, like, like the, the creature from the back Black Lagoon. Maybe was there some kind of like, uh, like Universal Monsters cartoon or something like that with Dracula and the creature from the Black. Oh, maybe Scooby Doo. I think there was a creature from the Black Lagoon and Scooby Doo. Yeah, Scooby Doo. Oh. Maybe. Spoiler, I never liked Scooby-Doo when I was a kid. All right, so that'll make my prediction pretty easy. <laughs> well, who knows if I like it now? I don't know. But I didn't like it because, like, I just thought it was stupid that every episode ended the same way. And I didn't like didn't like the characters. I liked monsters and aliens and killing Rob, He-Man and Voltron. And that's what I liked about this, by the way, was that huh. it was sci-fi that mm-hmm. there were different kinds of aliens. There were rogue beasts. There was all these, when they were in, uh, when they were in like the slave ship, when they were captured, we already, we got to see all these different kinds of aliens. I thought I was like, I was like, oh, I hope we get to see different aliens. Cause I'll feel like it's a cop out. Mm. And they were all different. I thought that was great. I love that kind of stuff where they create this world of how far in the future are they, by the way, to where- I don't know. I was kind of wondering that myself. Mm. Because they know all these aliens, I guess. They weren't, like, freaked out by seeing aliens. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, because at this point, Voltron is, like, an ancient legend, too. So Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. maybe Voltron was, like, like a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away type of thing. Or maybe uh, uh, 
uh, and then they have to rediscover it or something like that. I'm trying, I'm doing a little research right now, trying to figure out if there, it says anywhere when this actually takes place. That's right. Cause wasn't he bound? Like he was bound whenever Hagar turned into a um, goddess. Yeah. She turned into a beautiful goddess and floated in. Well, yeah. Him. Then she like put a curse on him to turn him into mm -hmm. lions, but he's already lions. Like what? Plus, was it even necessary for her to turn into a beautiful goddess? All she was doing was casting a spell. Ooh, exactly. Exa and she turns back into a witch. So Maybe that's just telling us that sometimes Plot holes. Her, she can like trick people by becoming a beautiful goddess. But really, it's the witchy with the kitty. The witchy with the kitty. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what I put in my notes about the... I said... They keep talking about thinking of something, but never get around to thinking of something. Mm -hmm. I was getting really annoyed by that. Well, he also mentions we need brains, not bronze to solve this. But then bronze is what solves it. Like, yes, exactly. Bronze. Can you do it, Hunk? What, bend the bars? <laughs> yeah. And there, there really was, question. There are friendly vultures where they're like, oh, I think that the vultures are beautiful now that whatever they say. Now that they saved our lives. <laughs> this whole thing was, I don't know, it was like aimed at children. Or something. Yeah, what what the heck? <laughs> Cartoons for children? <laughs> yeah. I also like that there was going to be a big arena battle. That's always fun in any movie or TV show where they have like the big arena battle and you're like, yeah, but then they didn't. Because I did think about that. I was like, how are these five dorks going to stack up against the row beast? That's mm. not going to work. Mm. But then now we find out that we never actually get to see them fight. Them. Oh, maybe Voltron will. Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, I think that they were saying that uh, Voltron is a... Voltron will, will kick, and then then King Zarkon's like, Voltron is no match for my Robies. <laughs> yeah, right. Mm -hmm. You wish. Your favorite part of this episode. My favorite part of this episode. Was... Okay, again, it when it ended, things. and she yeah, could stop watching it. <laughs> I mean, you know, um, I the the part when they're they are trying to get out of that. Uh, what do you call that that they're stuck in? Cage? Oh, dungeon. Uh, dungeon. There we go. Yeah. Dungeon. Oh, I was going to say a plot hole. <laughs> okay. Whenever they're stuck in that dungeon and Paige goes, I'm in no hurry. And I thought that was the cutest part. Um, and one of the best parts about it, because it did add an element of, you know, some sense of humor to it. And like I said, anytime that uh, I almost called him, uh, chunks just like you um <laughs> hunk and um hunk and page any there yeah i thunk that um but anytime that like yeah page and hunk were together and they had their banter those are my favorite moments hmm. i'm surprised michael did you have a favorite <laughs> moment yeah, when they formed Voltron and then they formed the blazing so oh that didn't happen in that I was going to say um, yeah, I guess I, when they finally get to the castle of lions and you're, you're kind of like, oh, there it is. It's, they're so close. Um, that, that kind of like really tickled my undies and made me um, <laughs> excited to see uh, Vol Voltron show up, but it never did. But um, so, th so that, I guess the, the culmination of, of this episode was probably my favorite part, but also just like the, the, the world building. Like, uh, I mean, I guess the you know, all the, the millions of exposition that they give you was, really did paint the picture of this universe where there's rogue beasts and different aliens and, and this Voltron, whatever it is, some that we're going to see someday. So I think that, I think, I guess the whole, the whole world, the universe, uh, galaxy put together was what really tickle my my fancies the most they should have called him bro beast been kind of cool right because he's like maybe wow, wow. That would have been good. uh you know i was thinking what my favorite part was and it may have just been the beginning when it first started off and we hear optimus prime's voice and we hear that cool song i actually remembered the song oh yeah me too yeah uh, like before even hearing, it, I knew I still knew how it went in my head, and and I was like, 
but is that right? And then I watched it and I was like, yes, I'm right. Dun, 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 dun. Um, but then also, yeah, that, and then, yeah, the, the, the world that it's in, the fact that they're a cool alien, I mean, because there's so many things they can do with different aliens and different worlds. You can go on forever and that, that's what makes it exciting. But I guess with the premise being some big giant robot guy that can fight everything, you kind of need different worlds and aliens because otherwise he, it's not much to do on earth for a guy right. like that. He's pretty, he's pretty mm. There's no row beasts on Earth. Not yet. Hopefully there never will be. If if we can, as long as we got Voltron on our side, defending the universe <laughs> from the row beasts. <laughs> but yeah, the music was awesome, man. Like the that synth horn. Dun, 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 and then like yes. it kind of turned into a little bit of a techno beat. It's like, Let's see. Now speaking of techno beats, Roz, you have to talk about you for a moment. What do you say? Yes, let's talk about me. Moi, moi, moi. So, let's talk. You are working on something called, and I saw you posting about it, by the way. Mm -hmm. Chill. Yes, yes. So, Girl Chill is a series that's been written by Robert Michael, and it is about a few different characters going after what they want in life. Sometimes they're going after uh, dreams of uh, what they want to be. And sometimes it's just who they want to be with. And they are willing to go to very, very lengthy, desperate measures to get those things or people. Um, and it's, it's been a really, really fun process. It'll be coming out this summer, I believe on uh, Amazon Prime. So um, yeah, keep an eye out for it. Um, it's an independent show, but yeah, I've, I've enjoyed working on it. And then I'm working on uh, kids stuff too. Uh, the Zippy Zops with my pal, Jeff Irwin. We've been writing some silly educational songs for kids. Mm, nice. So if you look up, yeah, the Zippy Zops, like the alphabet, we make the alphabet fun again. Um, and counting from one to 20 or days of the week. So that's been a lot of fun too. So yeah, that's, that's what I've been up to. But also I, I wrote Michael a song. Oh, uh, me? Can or I sing it? I would love to hear it. <laughs> okay so i wrote you a song let me just make sure it's very very short don't worry but um make sure i'm in the right key ba 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 okay here we go <clears throat> michael kenyon rostenberg i wrote you a song i wrote you a song michael kenyon rostenberg this is your song this is your song that was your song nice <laughs> It reminds me of, uh, this is the theme to Gary's show, the opening theme, Gary Shandling show, I don't know. It was one of my favorite car, uh, sitcoms in the in the 80s, but I loved it, yeah. Thank you, yeah, no, I, I just like it, it, it really, and with that dialect, it just like, it pops. It needs to be in that dialect, I think. Yes, well, exactly. Well, Roz, you're in luck, because Michael wrote you a song, actually, as well. No yeah. way. It no goes way. like this. Ross Stanley is the best. Ross Stanley is our guest. Whoa. I like it. I like it. Nice. Nice. Now, the two shortest songs in the world. <laughs> no, Michael and I have a shorter song. <laughs> We do. We do. Yeah, we have our our yeah, first yeah. album we ever recorded in 2000, uh, Falling Towers, six songs that suck. There were six songs on it. And it was they really did five suck. songs and like a seven second bad song. Yeah. Anyway, that was so stay tuned for that because then we did have a seven second song. And uh, maybe it was like five or six. Ross, I think it was seven. That sounds right. Can you tell us a little bit more about Girl Chill? I just want to hear a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, sure. I want people to look up this interview. Right. When they're looking up Girl Chill and they're going to Google and they're going to see this and then they're going to be like, what is her background? Yeah, <laughs> so, sure, exactly. Yeah, right, about, right. They're not going to know what's going on. They're going to be like, why is this Girl Chill? <laughs> hey, no, this, yeah. Is, so they, this... Do they talk about Voltron in this show or something? Like, <laughs> yeah, so Is this, this a Voltron spinoff? Right. <laughs> Girl chill. Um, defender of the uterus. Okay, anyway, yeah. um, this is, <laughs> this, so this 
So Pidge is not in Girl Chill. Girl Chill, it's li- I guess you call it live action when you have real people, right? Yeah. So I play the character Melody. Uh, Melody wants to be a model. Uh, and she, it, she will get it come uh, hell or high water. Um, and the way she goes about it, though, is not, you know, no one ever really goes in like a, I guess, a unilateral, you know, straightforward direction ever with their career. But she tries to, but she kind of goes about it in a roundabout way and then ends up stepping on a lot of people to get to where she wants to be as a model. Um so there's there's some very human characteristics in these characters. Uh, there's another character that she 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 just wants a, a boyfriend, um, but she wants like a very very like serious you know relationship. But you're at that point in life where it's like I don't know if it's gonna happen, you know. Um, so yeah, girl chill. It's great. It's it's just I'm loving it. It's um very dramatic, if you will. Um, but you do wonder what's gonna happen next at the end of end of each episode. Is this is so so i think we might have to somebody has to say wtf girl chill yes yeah but then we, here's the here's the thing that we can't have you as, as a guest exactly exactly i know womp, because womp, then what womp. if we hate it <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay okay there we go applause? do you get to show off your comedy chops i do i get to show them off a bit in, in this in this um because yeah it is it is uh, I like a dramedy, I would say, in that category, in that genre. And um, a little bit more of my dramatic chops, which I don't get to showcase as much. But um, I've worked with Robert Michael before on another series. And um, he knows that there are times when I am a serious actor. So I'm, I'm more showcasing my serious times. But there are some good comedic times for this character, for sure. Wow. Glorious. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, we will include all the links, the pertinent links for Roz, Girl Chill, and the Zippity Doodahs. Just kidding, it's called the Zippy Zops. Get it right, Zippy everybody. Zops. Um, Zippy Zops. We have the links in the description box below, so go click on those, follow Roz, follow the Zippy Zops, check out Girl Chill just below. Um, now, we're gonna move forward all the way to the terrible 1984s the terrible twos also known as the bottom lines the final two questions of the show michael and i michael and i like to ham it up right here but let's skip that part whatever we're talking about voltron yeah Mike does this is the about. bottom line on voltron mm. so the first question is michael Kenyon rosenberg on a scale of one to 10, what would you call the first episode of Voltron, Defender of the Universe? Seven. That, that I would give it a worried. solid seven. Solid, you were worried I was gonna give it a 10? Well, you went like, you held it long enough where I'm like, <laughs> no, you cannot be serious. No, nah, no, nah, I mean, I mean, I liked it, I mean, when if I was like, how old I was I like six years old when this came out or something like that, then uh, I mean, negative five or, or, or something. I don't know. Uh, I don't think you're supposed to say your age. Whatever. I don't care. Uh, I'm 42. Um, but uh, I would have probably given it a 10 back then because I loved this show. I think I, I, I'm remembering back. I feel like I might have had all the lions and like put Voltron wow. together and played with it and just formed the blazing sword and all like that fun stuff when I was a kid, but uh, rewatching it. Um, I was pleasantly excited that it did not ruin my childhood memories of it. So seven, it is. Well, Roz scale of one to 10, what would you give the first episode of, and remember my feelings. I, uh, okay. no, you do not have to. Uh- <laughs> I would say I would give this a 5.5. I am leaning with that 0.5 on the positive side because while it wasn't as entertaining for me and maybe something I wouldn't watch currently, I did think about as a kid if I would watch it. And maybe as a kid, maybe I would have enjoyed that exposition. Obviously, I didn't know the word exposition when I was little, but maybe, <laughs> maybe I would have been like, oh, this is a lot of information I'm taking in 
oh, wait, we just saw Voltron. I've got to watch the next episode so I can, you know, see him in action. So I would say 5.5. I just felt like it was, there was a lot of information to take in. Hmm. Well, as for me, boy, I like that. Just op- remember that our entire friendship rests on your answer here. <laughs> you know, I really like the opening song. I really like the world. I thought that the writing for this first episode was very subpar. I do think that it's going to get much better once they are part of Voltron and they fight aliens and whatever. But it, I thought that this first episode should have Voltron in it or should just have something and it really didn't. Um, I didn't dislike it. I still enjoyed watching it, but I feel like I wish I'd watched the fifth episode instead of the first mm. or the seventh or something that would have been fun because this episode alone to me was a generously given 4.5. Mm. I was happy to watch it and I enjoyed it, but like you watch for this guy. I don't, I don't watch for Sven. <laughs> Well, we might not even have Sven anymore after a few episodes. So. <laughs> anyway, so now we got to move on to right? we got to move on to the final <laughs> question, which is for the purposes of this podcast, we all had to watch the first episode of Voltron: Defender of the Universe. But now that the podcast is over and we are free to move about the internet, Michael Canyon Rosenberg, would you watch the second episode of your own volition? Well. Yeah. We watched this on an Amazon Prime, and they give you the first episode for free. Uh, and then to watch future episodes, you have to pay for stars. And I don't have stars, so I'd have to pay oh. for it to watch future episodes. Um, would I shell out? I guess it says two ninety nine a month for the first it? six months. <laughs> um, to, if you want to watch, so two ninety nine a month for the first six months uh, of Stars, and I think I would. I, I, for, I first of all, I gotta see, I gotta see Voltron. I got to see that that giant robot and his giant flaming sword. Um, I got to see him. It, that's my guy. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta see that 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 stupid giant robot lion thing. I don't know. I I I, I I I I was so into the show when I was a kid, and I mean, obviously, like Ryan was with with He Man, and I'm sure he watched more He Man episodes after we we did. Uh, I liked Robotech as a kid, but I wasn't like su- super into it. I didn't know when it, what time it came on. Voltron. I remember I was there. I I don't remember what time it came on right now but when i was a kid i knew when it came on i was always sitting in front of the tv watching it like this um so i would i would watch i would watch the second episode look he's got some flair too by the way what's up with these things what's going on those are wings Hmm. i think uh roz would you watch the second episode um well i i i don't (laughs) think (laughs) I don't think I will. Um, not that I, not that I dislike it. I just don't think it's, it's for me. Right. Um, so I just, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to watch the second episode. Well, you're not even trying. That's why. What? <laughs> well, Michael broke down the exposition of what it's going to cost to get. <laughs> well, yeah, but then you get all the stars too, so you can watch <laughs> you other things on stars as well. So that is on true. The merits true. of the show, not on the streaming service of the month. You know. And I, I'm judging on the merits of the show, but I wanted to point out there's other other aspects. But anyway, yes. But on the merits of the show, I likely will not watch the second episode. Well, your loss. I'm uh, I'm actually I'm actually leaning towards yes I would watch the second episode because I want to see Voltron not because this first episode necessarily deserves it but because I'm aware of Voltron I'm sure I watched a bunch of episodes and I'm sure that we're going to get this big old head. what is this thing too what is that anyway. yeah pretty cool whatever it is <laughs> yeah I mean barely 
but yes, I would because I want to see Voltron. All right, Ryan, we're still friends. Oh, what a relief. <laughs> boy, oh boy, I can wipe off the spittle off my face. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so nervous and stressed. I've decided I'm not going to quit the podcast. So. <laughs> no, boy. So that's it, you guys. If you want us to review a show, honestly, then just say WTF snorks, WTF whatever the hell Roz was talking about with the fish ears. Oh, chill. Oh, think, that's not it. Sorry. <laughs> I think it was Scooby-Doo. I think it was. Like, I think so. I Now that I think about it, I think it, it was a, one of the Scooby-Doo villains. And you ran like this. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. If you want us to review Girl Chill, we'll, we'll probably be nice. We'll probably be nice for that one just because Roz is in it. Speak for yourself. I'm yeah, I know. I know Ryan's not going to be nice about it. Um, <laughs> But that's good. I'll be like, but Roz is in it. Exactly. Yeah. But that's it. So make sure you say WTF and whatever show you want us to review. And we will uh, put it on the list and probably do it. That's about it for us. And what I'm trying to say is this podcast was very funky. This podcast was formed like Voltron. This podcast was a defender of the 1980s cartoons. (laughs) That's about it, guys. Please be sure to give us a like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for notifications. And always remember what Mr. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg likes to say with a mouthful of popcorn... First, don't forget to register to be an organ donor. But after that, don't forget to watch the first of things. Forgot to put my finger on the end recording. Okay. <laughs>